Silicon Valley. Technology, art, green, and sustainability. Hi, welcome to Silicon Valley Tech, Art, Green, and Sustainability. Today I'm talking to a local artist, a Bay Area artist, that takes sustainability and art to a new level. Will Tate, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You came uh, down from uh, Berkeley, Oakland? Oakland, Emeryville, actually. Emeryville. Yeah. Um, could you do a little self-introduction for the audience and tell them a little bit about yourself? Certainly. I grew up locally in Redwood City in the 50s when there weren't too many houses, and I remember uh, mostly from Menlo Park to San Jose as all being fruit trees. Uh, went to high school here and kind of got my start here in the Bay Area. And um, what, you got, what got you started in art then? Did you take classes or how did that come about? Well, I had an uncle who lived in San Francisco and every Friday night I would take a Greyhound bus, and go to the city and stay for the weekend with my uncle who would take me to the De Young Museum where they had art classes for kids free. So at the, I guess when I was about seven, I started taking art classes. So you would go up on the bus when you were seven yeah. and meet him up there by yourself. Yes. The way things have changed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the de Young has changed as well. And the de Young has changed you, a lot, yes. Yeah. And you started classes there and did, they, and did you take classes in school as well? And then that just led you to becoming an artist or? Well, I did like to, you know, I lived up in the hills behind Redwood City, so I didn't really get out to play with kids a lot. I roamed around in the hills, and I liked to take a drawing pad with me and kind of figure out how to draw things so that they looked real. That was my big thing when I was a kid, and I liked to make stuff. Then in high school, I worked in a boatyard in Redwood City making wooden sailboats. That got me involved with woodwork, and my uncle was also a violin maker. So he got me involved with woodwork. And then eventually I ended up at the Art Students League of New York, which is a really high, uh, kind of high-end art school. Uh, all you do is art all the time. And how did you end up there? I had a teacher in college who said, you know, you don't need to be here. You should go to an art school. And I took his advice and left school and wandered off to New York. And found a place to be. So when was, about what year was that? That was in the early 60s. In the 60s? Yeah. That, that must have been a fun place to be. It was really interesting, New York in the 60s. You know, it was, uh, I had a few experiences that <laughs> I don't think you would have anymore. Well, I think I've only been to New York three times in some of the art places there, the, the uh, Modern Museum of Art and, oh, uh, I can't remember the name of the other one off the top of my head right now, but it's, but it's been a while. And, and then. That. The Smithsonian, of course, yeah. in, in D.C. Guggenheim. Guggenheim, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I studied with a man named Robert Beverly Hale, who was a curator at the Met. And he gave me a pass to wander around anywhere I wanted in the Met and had me uh, copying master drawings and so forth. So I spent a lot of time in the museum and much time just wandering around looking in the galleries. You know, I spent five years in New York uh, doing nothing but uh, studying and looking at all the cool artwork. Um, well we're going to pull up some artwork now, some current artwork, artwork um, that you provided us some photos of. And uh, um, here we go, we've got one of them on screen here. Can you tell us a little yes. bit, two actually on screen. This is my current work. I'm doing a lot of work with uh, what is called CNC carving. CNC means computer numerically controlled. Now computer numerically controlled machines produce just about everything made in the world, manufactured in the world nowadays. But recently it has become uh, less expensive enough for artists and people like myself to buy the equipment and teach ourselves how to use it. So I have taught myself how to program and I program computers to uh, carve relief carving in wood. So is that all wood or is there metal there too that we were looking at? The one piece that looks like metal has actually been coated with metal. It's wood. It's carved wood. So the left one. The one on the left. That's right. It's carved with, uh, that's yellow cedar from Alaska actually. It's beautiful. And I then coated it with uh, some kind of metal 
and then used chemicals to color it. So the, the outside of it is metal? Yes, the outside skin. It looks like it might be a, a musical instrument almost. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it could be, like a gong or something. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go to the next slide. These pieces are, again, what's called relief carving. Relief carving is a two-dimensional or two-and-a-half-dimensional art, uh, such as the Greeks used on their temples. And it's a way of making uh, a shallow amount of space look like it's three-dimensional. So with CNC carving, you're limited to the depth that a bit can go, and that's about two inches. So these are two inches in depth and then mounted on rocks from the beach. So you're, are your bits a half inch, two inches, three inches? Well, the bits are all about the same length, but the, the actual diameter, I usually use a bit that's about a uh, 16th of an inch in diameter. So it's kind of like a needle. It goes very slow, uh, takes hours and hours and hours. I've done some pieces that take up to 180 hours on the machine. Okay, now we, we've got another w slide up here. And this, this one is actually mounted on a piece of bronze that I forged. Uh, then mounted on a piece of oak below that. This is a, a kind of so a So the musical. kind of bluish dark is the bronze. That's and bronze, And then yes. the other, the, the uh, kind of... The flat piece underneath the flat piece is under. a piece of oak. Uh -huh. And the uh, piece above is walnut. And it's kind of a musical theme using the idea of uh, up and down kind of oh, wavy yeah. forms. Like you would see on a... On a like you would see on a, a, a some kind of a, a musical or score. Oh, a score. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Waveforms are one of the things I really like to work with a lot. That's a piece of walnut. Oh. Yeah. So oh, this. Okay. So this piece is oak also. No, that's a piece of walnut, and it was a, a headboard. So that's big enough for a queen size bed. Well, we'll come back to that one okay. in a minute. So going back to the how, how you create that is you use bits then, like a drill bit. Well, if you imagine a uh, router. A router, okay. On steroids, <laughs> basically. Uh, I have what is, uh, like if you took this table uh -huh. and it stretched it out to five by 10 feet, uh -huh. and then built a little, what is called a gantry that goes up over the table and it runs on rails. I can control that with a computer to make it go anywhere I want, sideways, back and forth, and up and down. So all it's a very same. large piece of it's machinery. It's a very large then. machine, okay. five by ten feet. So that's basically the size I can work in, up to some, a five by ten feet. And how long have you been working with this media? You said you were you did um, boats and when well, you were boats kid. were more when I was in high school. Yeah. Uh, although I did build my own kayak that. Uh, I paddle in. Nice. Uh, I've been working in wood now for about five years. You, you don't do that for others though, right? The kayak. If somebody really wanted me to build a kayak, I would. It would be a very special kayak. It would kayak. be very ex yeah. expensive to do that. Yeah, you don't hear about custom boats in the Bay Area. I guess you'd have to go up north to, to find that. I guess there would be no more boatyards creating boats in the Bay Area. Very few. Yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff being done in Marin County. Uh, most of it has gone down to Los Angeles, actually. I did uh, my boat work people uh, stuff in Redwood City, but that was Clark Boat Works, and they're no longer there. So um, Access Condos downtown here in San Jose, you had an opening there, and you have another opening coming up in Washington, and I suppose you have a, a lot of openings. Tell us about the Access and how that came about, yeah. and then we'll switch to the Washington. Well, my wife was involved with a group here in Silicon Valley. Uh, and through her and the group that she was in, I met the woman who has the Axis Gallery, which is at the Axis Building. Which and is that new beautiful building on 87 with all glass in front. Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. yes. So in, at the bottom floor in the corner of that building is a gallery, the Axis Gallery. And in one of the meetings, uh, I was asked to do a show. And we did that uh, throughout the building in the various uh, places that they show people. Then, I do have a show coming up uh, Saturday night. I've got an opening in Washington. And to, and that's a glass piece, which you'll see in a picture soon. Uh, I and that is, now is that a long show or is that just for a week that it's gonna happen? That's actually a, f a fundraiser. So it'll be an overnight type of thing. I'm going up there actually. A fundraiser for? For, for the museum. It's okay. the Glass Museum of Tacoma, Washington. Oh, okay. okay. And it specializes in glass art. 
this is their annual fundraiser, and they have a number of artists who donate pieces to that. Very nice. Kind of a black tie event. Now, I heard about, and you probably know a, a little bit about this, there's, a, there's in Washington or Oregon, there's a beach that they have a glass art event every year where they float different spheres that are made out of glass. Have you been involved in that at all? 